Hello and welcome to Need Hrania YouTube channel. My name is Branislav Berec and in this video I'm going to show you how to play the new game from the Game Brewer publisher called Oak. The game will be available on the GameFound crowdfunding platform. The campaign starts on March the 14th and Oak is a game for one to four players. So at the end of the video I'll show you how to play the solo game as well. And last note before we start, Everything you're going to see in this video is the prototype version of the game, so the final version of the components may differ from what you're about to see. So, let's get started. So first, let's take a look at the components of the game. The main game board contains a picture of a large oak with three temples nearby. Each temple has three action spaces, this one has one large stone, this one has two stones and this action space has three stones. In games with less than four players, there are some neutral druids on some of these action spaces. The area in the top right corner of the game board contains a place where players build monoliths. Then we have three major random elements in the game. The cards over here are creature cards, these are artifacts and here we have potions. While the creatures and artifacts have these draw piles, there are only three potions in the game, the remaining tiles are in the box, and this pre-printed one is obviously part of every game. These ingredients are randomly drawn from the back at the start of each round, and finally, these cards are double-sided, one side shows the monolith, the other side shows shrines, I'll talk about those later in the video. Then each player takes one player board and all the player boards are unique. They all have unique special spaces in this area and there might be some other details unique on the player boards as well. Each player starts with three active druids on their player board, then six resources of each type. There are feathers, mistletoes and runes. Then all players have six of their druids at the roots of the oak. And each player starts with three mood cards in their hand. The remaining ones are nearby as the personal supply of the player. The game is played over five rounds and each round has three phases. In the first phase, the dawn phase, players simply gain income. This is the standard income. Players gain resources. The standard income can be increased over the course of the game. Then the second phase is the day phase, which is the main phase of the game. In this phase, players take turns in a clockwise direction. And on your turn, you have to choose one of the following three options. First, you may play a mood card from your hand, and then you can either choose the temple action or the oak action. When you choose the temple action, you have to take one of the druids from your player board, one of the active druids, Place it in the temple location indicated on the card. You have to match the temple and also the action space in that temple. And then after paying the resources, you take the action. Here you would pay six feathers, then choose one of the available artifacts and place it next to your player board. The card would be placed somewhere in your personal discard pile. Later in the video I will briefly describe most of the actions you can take. The other option is to take the oak action which is at the bottom of the card. Again, you have to pay the resources. Then take one of your passive druids which are at the roots of the oak and move it to the first space on one of the branches of that oak. For that you will score the victory points printed on that space and when you move on these branches when you get to the last space on the branch, you will score additional victory points based on the condition on that space. The second option is to take a special action with one of your druids. Special action spaces are on your artifacts or directly on your player board. Here you can place any druid. On these spaces with this kind of ornament, you can only place upgraded druids. More on that later. Another special place is this monolith place. Each player may place one of their druids here and build a monolith after paying the resources. When you don't have any more active druids or if you don't want to use any more active druids, the third option of your turn is to pass. 
After you pass, you may no longer play mood cards from your hand and you may no longer use any special action spaces. However, you may gather these ingredients from the forest. You take one of the passive druids, if you have available, choose any of those ingredients, place your druid on the chosen space and place that ingredient token into your supply. On your next turn, if you still have any passive druids available, and if there are still any ingredients available, you may again gather those ingredients, choose one of your druids, take one of the ingredients, and add it to your supply. Once everyone passed, and there are no more ingredients available, or no more passive druids available, the day phase is over. The last phase of the round is the dusk phase, it's an administration phase, it's the preparation for the next round. First, you will return all the druids back to your player board. However, for each druid, you must have a resting space available. If you don't, those druids will be returned back to the roots of the oak. Druids from the forest also come back to the roots of the oak. You will also take all the mood cards you have played back into your hand. And there are some additional administration steps, I will talk about them later in the video. The goal of the game is to gain the most victory points, and you gain these victory points by acquiring these creatures, they have the victory points printed at the top of the card, you also gain victory points for these artifacts, but when you use those artifacts you may lose some of those victory points, then you gain victory points for moving on these branches of the oak, and also for brewing potions. The game ends at the end of the fifth round and the player with the most victory points is the winner. Now let's take a look at the player's turn in more detail. To quickly summarize, you have three options. You can either play one of your mood cards from your hand and then either take the temple action or the oak action, or you can take one of these special actions, or you can pass and gather ingredients. So the first option is to play the mood card and playing the temple action. First of all, choose the mood card from your hand and choose the action space from that mood card. Again, let's say we choose this three stones action space at the feathers temple. Then take one of your active druids and place it in the corresponding space in that temple. So remember, we chose the space with three stones. There are three temples in the game each temple has three action spaces and each of those action spaces corresponds to one line on the card. To take that action, you have to pay the indicated number of resources and as I mentioned, you have to take one of your active druids. Those active druids are druids on your player board or above the player boards in one of these shrines. These shrines and these spaces are called the resting spaces. It's like a dwelling for the druid. Each dwelling can host maximum one druid. You may never use these passive druids to take the actions in these temples. When you take an action and your chosen location is already occupied by other druids, you have to take another active druid from your player board and return it back to the roots of the oak. Then you can take the action on that card. Now, in the following chapter, I'm going to cover the most important actions in the game. The first action I'm going to talk about is take the creature card action. When you take that action, you can choose one of these three available creature cards, and if you want, you can pay one mistletoe and refresh the display. Take all the creature cards, discard it, and draw three new cards. Then, you can take one of those cards, and there is no cost associated with it, and place that card under your player board in the designated space. With that, you immediately gain the victory points printed on the card and also the special abilities of that creature. You will find the description of all those abilities in the rulebook. Then you will immediately refill the display. Now, the number of creature cards you can have is limited by the position of this marker. You can move that marker to the next space by paying these indicated resources any time on your turn, or by playing a specific action on one of the mood cards. In this situation, the yellow player would have a space for another creature here. The second type of action is taking one of these artifacts. Again, you take one of the artifacts from the display, and if you want, you can refresh the display. 
then place the artifact to the right side of your player board and you have to align these four victory points with this symbol. You take those four victory points immediately and each player board can only have two artifacts at any one time. Each artifact has a space for a special action and I'm going to talk about those special actions in a minute. Then one of the actions allows you to brew these potions. To do that you have to discard the corresponding ingredients or in this case you can discard three, four or five different ingredients and gain the corresponding reward. You have to have those ingredients in your supply and when you do and spend those ingredients you can choose the reward and for each action you can brew one potion. Then there's an action which allows you to build these shrines, these dwellings for druids. When you do, take one of these cards, as I said they're double sided, and you can choose the shrine with two victory points or a shrine with four victory points. Similar to creatures, this marker limits the number of sacred spaces you can have. And again, you can move that marker with an action or any time on your turn by paying the indicated resources. And when you build a shrine, you have to choose the orientation. This one can only hold a regular druid, however it scores 4 victory points. The other one only scores 2 victory points, but also accommodates the upgraded druid. Once you select the orientation, slide the card under the player board and the orientation remains the same for the remainder of the game. The reason why you build these shrines is this kind of action which allows you to take more druids from the oak tree, usually one or two druids, and you take those druids and make them the active druids which you can place either on your player board or into one of these shrines. Again, those spaces must be available now. With more druids you can do more actions, but again you are limited with the number of mood cards when you take the action in the temples. But as we will see in a minute, you can also use druids to take special actions on these artifacts. Then, as I previously mentioned, these action spaces can only be visited by upgraded druids. So, there is an action which allows you to upgrade one of your druids, either the active or passive druid. And when you do, you can choose one of the six available upgrades and place it on that druid. It now becomes an elder druid. Each upgraded druid has its own special abilities. For example, this one has reduced cost of actions. This one has its own resting space on the player board. This one reduces the cost of the brewing actions. This upgraded druid can be sent to an occupied action space without sending another druid to the tree. The one over here adds one additional slot to your player board. And this last one, the Ancient one, if present in the game, has a special abilities of all other upgraded druids. And it also comes with its own slot for your player board. As I said, the upgraded druids can only rest in the resting spaces with this symbol, so when you upgrade your druids, make sure you have those dwellings, those resting spaces available. When you have so many druids, you either want to place them on these special places or if you want to use them with the mood cards, you have to take additional mood cards from your supply, from your reserve, into your hand. And for that, there is an action with this symbol which is on the starting mood cards. There are some additional actions on these mood cards, but I'm not going to cover all of them. You can find their description in the rulebook, but we have already covered all the most important ones. When you play a mood card from your hand, instead of the temple action, you can take the oak action. Again, you have to pay the indicated number of resources. And then, based on the symbol on the card, and based on the symbol on the mood card over here as well, you take one of your passive druids and move it on the corresponding branch on the tree. There are three branches on the tree. This one is associated with the feathers this one with mistletoes and this one with runes. You can have maximum one druid on each branch and when you take the oak action and you already have a druid on the branch, simply move the druid to the next space. More than one druid can be on the same space. When you move to a space you take the victory points printed on that space immediately 
and when you cross this solar token, this solar marker, move the solar marker to the next space on this solar track. And when the solar marker gets to a space like this, solstice is triggered. Players will gain resources printed on the spaces where they have their druids, which means you can gain maximum three benefits from the branches at the time of this solstice. So the game is paused for a second, players gain those benefits and then the game continues. When you reach the last space on the branch, you score these victory points immediately based on the condition on that space here. It will be two victory points for each upgraded druid you have right now. And then other players may get to the same space in the same round only. Because at the end of the round, all druids in this space will be laid down. And as this key icon indicates, the space will be locked and no other druid will be able to get to this space. The second option on your turn is to use a special action space, which is either printed on your player board or on the artifact or the monolith space. If the action space has this ornamentation, only an upgraded druid can visit that space. Then you take the action which is printed on that space. I have already covered the actions you can find on your player board. When you take the action on your artifact, you can move any of your active druids to that space and you don't need a mood card for that. Then you rotate the artifact so that the next symbol of victory points is aligned with the symbol of the artifact on your player board. That will usually cost you some victory points. However, in return, you gain the powerful benefit of that artifact. When, after using the artifact, you rotate it to the last space, you lose the victory points, gain the benefit of that artifact, but now you flip the artifact to the other side. The druid remains on that artifact for the remainder of the round. That artifact still counts as one of your artifacts, however the space is now available for new artifact. Since you don't need to play the mood card when placing a druid on the artifact, you also don't have to spend any resources to do that, and that means you really want to have those artifacts. The last special action space is this monolith action space. There is one special action space here for each player in each round. And when you place your druid here, it has to be upgraded druid. You have to pay the resources and then you can take the card with the monolith side up. And if you have any available slot, place the monolith above your player board each monolith is worth six victory points. The third option on your turn is to pass. When you do, you may take no more actions that turn. However, if you have a passive druid, you may move that druid to the forest and gather one of the ingredients. When the turn comes back to you and you still have any passive druids available and there are still any ingredients in the forest available, you may gather another ingredient. Only when all players have passed, and there are no more ingredients available or there would be no more druids available, the entire day phase is over. With this game mechanics, those players who have more passive druids available usually have fewer active druids available, which means they take fewer actions. However, they are first to gather these ingredients while other players still take turns with their active druids. These players with passive druids will continue gathering ingredients and then brewing potions in the next round. It may easily happen that the players with fewer active druids are now using the passive druids to gather these ingredients. And when players with more active druids but fewer passive druids finally get to take their turn and pass, they would have no more ingredients to gather. In the dusk phase, the administration phase at the end of the round, first druids from action spaces return back to your player board. However, they will only remain there if they have any resting spaces. Each space can only accommodate one druid and upgraded druids may only rest in spaces with these icons. So be careful if you wouldn't have enough resting spaces for your druids, they would come back to the tree. Then you recollect all the mood cards you have played this round. 
all the druids from the forest come back to the roots of the tree, then if any druid or druids reach the last space of one of the branches, they are laid down and the space is locked for the remainder of the game. Then move the solar marker to the next space. If it's this kind of space, the solstice will take place, which means all druids on the branches will take the resources printed on their spaces. However, only if the current victory points of that player is behind the solar marker. In case it's in front of the solar marker, the player wouldn't gain anything. At the end of the dusk phase of round 5, the game will be over. Each player may brew one last standard potion and gain the corresponding number of victory points. And then the player with the most victory points is the winner. The game comes with a solo game as well. In a solo game you will play against the character, a virtual character called Broichen. That character has all these mood cards but doesn't have a board. And all the druids start as passive druids on the game board. Set up the game for two players so you will set up some of these neutral druids. And with that you're ready to go. Now over the course of the game Broichen will gather these ingredients and gain victory points and he will also upgrade those druids but will never use those special abilities. But he doesn't use anything else, he doesn't use resources, he doesn't use creature cards, artifacts. When he gains one of these artifacts or cards he discards them. During the day phase when it's Broichen's turn Draw the top mood card from his deck, then place one of his druids in the indicated temple on the first empty space clockwise from the neutral druid, so here it would be this space, and in case all those spaces would be occupied, you place or move the druid on the corresponding branch of the tree, and even if that wouldn't be possible, you simply place the druid on the occupied space. This sequence is also shown on the card. Then after placing the druid, you perform the action shown on the card in this example, you would take the artifact with the highest value, and then it's the human player's turn. In this example, you would take the creature card with the highest value, again you would discard those, but you gain victory points for Broichan, and then at the end of the game, if you have more victory points than Broichan, you win the game. Again, I'm not going to cover all those actions on these cards, you will find them in the rulebook. So that's how you play Oak. If you have any questions or comments, I'll do my best to answer as many as I can. If you like the series, please subscribe. You can even support the channel on the Patreon page. You've been watching the preview of the game Oak from the Game Brewer publisher. My name is Branislav Berec and hope to see you next time. I would like to thank everyone who has ever supported the channel and especially the current supporters listed on this page. If you too would like to support the channel in creation of videos like this and other video tutorials and other content on this channel, please visit the patreon.com slash